there Akuma fans, Charlie with the Gosker application staff. Got a video today for you regarding tool offsets on a turning center. Those of you who um, have experienced Charlie in the field, you've probably heard me say that there is no wrong way of doing things as long as the result that you get is what you expected. We're going to narrow that that statement down a little bit to show you that there are a multiple uh, there are multiple ways of do of handling tool offsets on the L control but some of them are probably not a really good idea to pursue because you're opening yourself up to potential ouches so let's jump right into it you'll notice today that we are dealing with the P300 LA control this is the latest and greatest incarnation of the OSP control for an LB3000MYW. Uh, we're going to try to translate this backwards in time so that you can see how to do it with this latest version, the P300 before it became the A control, all the way back to P100 era. So this should, this video should be useful to you for about the last 15 years or so of uh, different OSP generation controls. Now, as you can see from my uh, my little uh, collision avoidance graphic here, we're not doing anything really complicated. I'll just hit cycle slam and you'll see the tool is going to do some turning. It's really not relevant, A, what we're making, B, how we're doing it. This process is going to work for turning tools, milling tools, all of the above. So the, uh, the first thing I want to do, let's go ahead and dump out of this and I'll retract my tool. Got to obviously be in manual mode. Okay, now the tool's out of the way. So let's look at several of the spots where the tool offsets are held. First off, I'm just going to reach up and touch the tool data tab on my, uh, my machine control. And those of us with the P300 generation control, I'm hoping we're running from the screen that you see here. Uh, this one is very simple. It uh, com combines all of the information about the individual tools. It's very handy. However, those of you that have other manufacturers of controls in your building, shame on you. You probably have decided that, well, let's let's work towards making this uh, the tool offset page look more like the other brands. So we have this page. I'm going to use the item down key and I've got pages that look like this. Now this is a lot more, uh, a lot more similar, a lot more similar. I guess that works. This is uh, this is similar to the other manufacturers offset page. The biggest difference is they don't necessarily have two columns for the nose radius compensation. They usually only have one. So uh, we have an offset page. If I item down again, I have a wear offset page. So those of you with the P200 and P100 control, you probably have never seen this thing before, but those two pages will look very familiar to you. So there are, we've got one, the tool, the information processing page for P300. We have the number two is the offset and wear page for the P200 and P100, but that's not that's not the end of the story. Those of you with the P300 control will also notice from your main operating screen that you have a value above F5 that says offset change. This one is very handy because if I touch it, it's only showing me the tools that are being used in the currently active program and it will list them in the order that they're being used. So this is dynamite and it combines the pages that we just saw into one. So by touching offset, Notice I've got a tab up here. There's my wear page. There's my nose comp page. And there's my tool offset page. Now I like using this offset change page because it clearly delineates the three different spots where we can possibly modify a tool. Ah, what the heck are you talking about, Charlie? Let's go back over here to the P200. And you'll notice that, okay, we've got a column for tool offset in X and Z, a column, a set of columns for nose radius compensation, and then we have a whole nother page for wear. Wait a second, I got column here, column here, page here. 
uh-oh, most people that have not taken the time to really embrace the use of the machine will do everything from this offset page. That's, I mean, it'll work, but this is exactly what I was trying to describe earlier in the video where I said you're opening yourself up to a world of hurt. Let's say, for instance, this is my tool number one. The X offset has been set. The Z offset has been set. I run my part and I measure it and I find that it's off a little bit. And let's just say I'm 5,000s large on the diameter. It will work for me to highlight the X column for tool offset and add minus 5,000s. Hey, no problem. It works. Now when I hit cycle slam, I'm going to make a good part. Okay. Even though that works, it's a perfect example of what not to do. What happens now when I change that insert? Uh, I, I don't know. that. How much did I put in there? Well, it's easy to know right now because I just put five thousandths in there. But what if that insert has spanned, I don't know, three shifts? What if that tool's been in there for a little while and I'm just now using it? Oh, I find I got a bad surface finish. I put in a new one. I have no clue how far from the original that insert has worn because every time I add or subtract a, a shift amount into the offset column, it just goes in and it's gone. It's lost. It's, it's in the great abyss. So let me put it back. There we go. I put it back because I knew it was there and show you that, wait a second, instead of putting that in the tool offset column, if I click over and use the tool wear column and add my minus 0 0.005, there we go. Now I can see by looking at it, the tool offset column. Oh, hey, I got a little, little sign there that's indicating there's something in the wear column, just a little warning for me. But my original offset, the one that was taken either by doing a manual cut or by touching off the tool setter is still perfect. Therefore, if I just change the insert and I don't bother to retouch the tool, I can come over and I can set my tool wear offset back to zero. And now I should be at least in the ballpark of that exact tool offset. Also, this helps greatly because what if I want to, let's, let's do our 5,000s. I'm going to touch my X column. I'm going to add minus 5,000s. Uh-oh, look at that. I slipped a finger. And so I hit enter. And currently on my machine, I've got the, there's a limiter that won't allow me to add or subtract greater than one millimeter. I've currently got that disabled. And so, oh. I think I just put in minus five thousandths. I actually put in minus fifty thousandths. What if it was half inch? I mean, there, there, there's the potential for oops is just huge here. And because I did it in the offset column and not the wear column, I, I, I can't see anything abnormal. It doesn't look bad. That number just doesn't mean anything to me. Let's add back my fifty thousandths and do the same thing on the wear page. If I added, hey, minus five thousandths, ho! Oh, now, I've, for one, I have got a an alarm that says, wait a second, my wear column is not allowed to have any more than one millimeter in it. If your tool wears more than a millimeter, you've got a serious problem. So there I'm protected right off the bat, but even if it was something less than, oh, let's just say I was going to do, I'm going to make an error inside of that envelope and I'm going to add minus one thousandth. Oh, nope, that's ten thousandths, but I didn't notice it. I fat fingered it. There's the evidence right there. I can see it. I can, whoa, hey, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. The wear is only a modification of the original offset by a very slight amount. And if it turns out, I look up there and it's something greater than what I expected, I know I made an error, but I can always backpedal to the original simply by, yep, set that to zero. I have not modified my primary offset of the tool. It's still in the ballpark. So let's just go ahead and rather than beat the dead horse, I'm going to put in a couple of, uh, couple of values here. 
I did this in the P200 and P100 type pages, but let's go ahead and go up to my P300 page and you notice, hey, check that out. It took the values from the P200 page and automatically transposed them on the P300 page. It doesn't matter where you put the values, they will transcribe to the other pages. Let's, uh, let's go in the other direction. We're going to highlight the Z and add positive. Oh, uh, let's go 12 and a half thousandths on that one. And if I go back over to my where column, there it is. Now, at the very beginning of this video, I showed you the offset change page. Let's take this theory and show you how well it works with this offset change button. The theory is that the offset page belongs to the tool setter. In other words, when I come down and I touch my tool setter, it puts its value in the offset page. That's it. That's the only interaction that I should be ever using bunk, this thing for. If it turns out my tool setter is miscalibrated, Come on now, let's go over to Charlie's video on YouTube that talks about how to reset the tool setter. It takes, you know, like 30 seconds after you've got a known good tool, so your tool setter should be calibrated properly. That means that this guy, the offset page, only belongs to the tool setter. If my tool setter's broken or I don't have one, that means that this column belongs to the setup guy as he's doing his touch off. On the fly, the uh, where column is the one that belongs to the operator. He's not going to get back here and monkey with the offset page. So that concept being out there now, offset page belongs to tool setter, where page belongs to operator. Notice I've got the tool offset tab highlighted here. Even though I close it out, if I come back into offset change, Akuma respects that philosophy and it will automatically have the where offset tab highlighted as soon as I touch the offset key. It knows, hey, that's where you want to go and that's where I'm going to be. So regardless of what you happen to be looking at before you close down this window, when you call it back up, it automatically takes you to the where offset page. It's basically holding you by the hand and saying, look, this is where you should be adjusting a tool. And there, hey, there are my where offsets, the changes that I made all the way back here, boom, boom, and there, they all transcribe through to the same page. Simple, simple, right? Nose radius compensation, same thing. Um, if I put a value in here of say, oh, hey, we want to, uh, hmm, 10 thousandths X, 10 thousandths Z. If I come back over to my tool data tab, we'll notice that now my nose comp has a value. Come down to the, whoops, that was it, nose comp page. There we go. So let's just, let's just take that as gospel, basically. If you have one setup guy or the tool setter that's allowed to touch the offset page and everyone else uses the where page, you're just gonna save yourself a whole world of hurt. So hold on to that concept and I think it'll save you in the long run. If you have any questions or problems, please feel free to reach out to your local Gossiger application staff. We're here to help you out. And uh, like and subscribe and all that other stuff. Feel free to leave any video suggestions in the comments and I'll be happy to answer whatever I can. Thanks, gentlemen. Have a great day.